Hey, this is Dr. Brian Mole, the diabetes coach. I am a master licensed diabetes educator, certified diabetes care and education specialist, and IFM certified in functional medicine. I specialize in helping people to reverse insulin resistance, metabolic dysfunction, and type 2 diabetes using a personalized functional medicine approach. In this video, I'm going to talk all about the personal liver fat threshold. There's a concept called personal fat threshold, which was originally used to describe the level of adiposity a person could withstand before becoming metabolically dysfunctional, insulin resistant, and ultimately developing type 2 diabetes. But this idea has been modified and specifically adapted to the liver and the amount of liver fat that a person has and how that can contribute even more specifically to insulin resistance and ultimately type 2 diabetes. Much of this work comes from Dr. Roy Taylor in the UK at Newcastle University. If you want to learn more about him and his work, check out the most recent interview that I did with him at my Mastering Blood Sugar podcast. You can go to iTunes or Google Play, wherever you get your podcasts, and check out Mastering Blood Sugar and look for the episode I did with Dr. Roy Taylor. Now, before we dive into the science and the understanding of this topic, I want to ask you to subscribe to my channel if you like this content, you like my videos. In fact, if you like this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel and then click that little bell for notifications. I try to release new videos every single week so that way you'll be notified when I release a new video and you can be one of the first to check it out. All right, so let's dive into this topic of personal liver fat threshold. There is a strong and well-established correlation or connection between fatty liver disease, non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, and insulin resistance and type 2 diabetes. We know that the accumulation of fat inside the liver, intrahepatocellular lipids or what are called diacylglycerols, that's the accumulation of fat inside liver cells, drives insulin resistance in the liver, which can lead to an elevation of glucose during a fasting state, which can lead to prediabetes and ultimately type 2 diabetes. So liver fat leads to insulin resistance, leads to pre and type 2 diabetes. But there's some confusion around this because fatty liver disease is usually associated with liver fat levels that are pretty high, like greater than 10%. And there's a grading system that hepatologists use to grade the amount of fat in the liver. The word steatosis refers to fat infiltration or accumulation in the liver. And there's a grading system called NAS which stands for the NAFLD activity score. And steatosis or fat infiltration in the liver is graded from zero to three. Grade zero is no steatosis, and that's listed as less than 5% liver fat. And I'm gonna tell you why that's a problem in just a few minutes. Grade one is five to 33%, grade two, 34 to 66%, and then grade three, is greater than 66% liver fat. Hard to imagine. The main problem with non-alcoholic fatty liver disease and the steatosis associated with it is that it can eventually lead to full-blown liver cirrhosis or advanced liver disease. So there's steatosis and then that moves into a condition called NASH or non-alcoholic steatohepatitis then it progresses to fibrosis of the liver and eventually cirrhosis, which is the final stages of liver disease. But what we're talking about is way before any of that. And in fact, most people with type 2 diabetes are not going to develop fibrosis or cirrhosis of the liver, but they are going to have fat accumulation in the liver. And that fat percentage can range anywhere from just over 2% all the way up to 10% or more. Now, as I mentioned a few minutes ago, currently a liver fat percentage of less than 5% is considered normal. But this becomes a problem when certain people have a lower personal liver fat threshold to where a smaller amount of liver fat can lead to insulin resistance and ultimately lead to type 2 diabetes. And again, a lot of this 
comes from the work of Dr. Roy Taylor in the UK. Dr. Taylor did two landmark studies assessing the connection between liver fat and diabetes remission. And these were interventional trials where he used a dietary intervention, a low energy restricted dietary intervention to help people lose body fat and lose liver fat and pancreatic fat. And the point was to see if the people would go into diabetes remission. And in fact, in these trials, about half or more than half did in fact go into full remission, A1C in the non-diabetic range without any medication. The first trial was called the direct trial. It was a larger research study, and they looked at people with a wide range of BMI or weights. And the average person in this study, in the direct trial, had a liver fat percentage of 16%, so a lot of liver fat. That was compared to a control group who had just 5.5% liver fat. In the direct trial, the liver fat of the participants went down from an average of 16% to just 3% liver fat, and 60% of them went into diabetes remission or reversal. And what Dr. Taylor found was that there were differing amounts of liver fat that each person had, and if they saw a reduction to a certain level, they achieved remission. There were some participants with very high BMIs, for example, a BMI of 45, that only needed to drop their BMI to 42, but they dropped their liver fat percentage enough to go into remission. So the amount of weight, the total weight, even the BMI was less important than the change in BMI and the liver fat percentage. He also noticed that there were people with a lower BMI who were also achieving remission when they dropped their BMI by about two points. So he did a follow-up study called Retune, and this study was done in non-obese participants. So in the Retune trial, the average BMI was just 24.5. So technically not even in the overweight range, which starts at a BMI of 25. And they were matched to a control group with a similar BMI, but who did not have type 2 diabetes. Again, this was a dietary intervention, so they put participants on an energy-restricted diet for two to four weeks, followed by six weeks of maintenance eating, which would be an energy balance, and then they would do that again, so a second cycle. And the idea was to repeat those cycles until the participant reached remission. Most of the participants needed only one or two cycles, and 70% of the participants went into diabetes remission, which is amazing. So these were participants on average who were not overweight, but were able to reduce their BMI from an average of 24.8 down to 22.4. So about a 2.4 difference in BMI from the beginning to the end of the trial. Now here's the really interesting thing. The average participant in this study had a liver fat percentage of 4.4% at the beginning of the trial. So these were people with type 2 diabetes who had a liver fat percentage of 4.5%. That's already below what's considered normal liver fat percentage, and they would get a grade 0 on the NASH activity scale. So what happened to their liver fat percentage through this trial? They actually brought their liver fat percentage down to 1.4% on average. And remember, 70% went into diabetes remission. So this idea of personal liver fat threshold is an important one because you may have a liver fat percentage of 3% and have type 2 diabetes where someone else might have a liver fat percentage of 5% and be totally fine, or even 6 or 7% and not have diabetes, even though they have fat accumulation in the liver. So how do we measure liver fat percentage? The best way is through an MRI. Of course, the gold standard would be a liver biopsy, but we're not going to do that. So the best way to the best way in the way that Dr. Taylor and his colleagues did it is with MRI studies, imaging. Most people aren't even going to do that. According to Dr. Taylor, it could be as simple as just taking a waist measurement. 
So there's a simple test called the waist to height ratio. You can measure your waist right around your belly button in the widest part in either centimeters and inches and divide that by your height in either centimeters and inches. Obviously use the same units when you do the calculation. And your waist to height ratio should be less than 0.5. And if you tend to have a thinner build, like you've always been on the thinner side and you are battling your blood sugar, battling your insulin, sensitivity, you might want to get that down even more, like closer to 0.48 or less. There are a few other markers that you can look for. One of them, a simple one, is fasting glucose. If your fasting glucose levels are above 90, then there's a good chance you have some degree of insulin resistance in the liver that is likely, not always, but likely coming from intrahepatocellular lipids or liver fat. You can also look at your triglyceride levels. Now, if you're on a really low carb diet or an energy restricted diet, your triglyceride levels might be suppressed, but we wanna see your triglyceride levels under 80. Definitely under 100, but really under 70 or 80 is ideal for metabolic health. If you look at a lab report, normal triglyceride levels go all the way up to 150. But again, in the Retune trial, the starting point for the participants with type 2 diabetes was a triglyceride level of about 140. So they were at 140, which would not be flagged as high, and they were already above that personal liver fat threshold that was driving the insulin resistance and diabetes. At the end point of the trial, when 70% went into remission, the average triglyceride level was down to 88.5. And I would argue that it could even be better. In fact, I think if the people who did not achieve remission went through around three or even four and continued to reduce their liver fat percentage, the ones who were not already below 2%, it's possible they could have seen an even higher level of remission. So what's the bottom line? We all have a different amount of liver fat that we can live with before we become insulin resistant and develop metabolic dysfunction, and ultimately type 2 diabetes. And that can range anywhere between about 2% to about 10%. Most of the time, non-alcoholic fatty liver disease is considered to be a liver fat percentage of greater than 10%. So if you're battling with a high morning blood sugar, high fasting blood sugar, but you're not obese or even overweight, check your waist to height ratio, make sure it's under 0.5 or maybe even under 0.48. And then you may need to set a goal to work on reducing liver fat in order to improve insulin sensitivity and ultimately good blood sugar control. I always recommend working with a skilled physician or doctor or nutritionist who knows how to administrate an energy restricted eating strategy similar to the one that Dr. Taylor uses. If you wanna learn more about that, I have a book all about it. It's called The Pro-Fast Diet. You can check it out on Amazon, The Pro-Fast Diet, a book I wrote a couple of years ago, all about using an energy-restricted dietary approach to reverse pre and type two diabetes and insulin resistance. All right, guys, that's it for this video. If you like this content, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel and click the bell for notifications so you don't miss any of my new videos. This is Dr. Brian Mole, the Diabetes Coach, and I'll see you back on the next video.